our northern people are very hard to deal with. Every northerner knows that. I'm not ashamed to say that I am a northerner. I cannot marry a northerner again. I'm not even joking. Dating them is something else. Marrying them is horribly something else. Because they are very difficult people. They don't understand why you should work. They don't understand when you even have money more than your husband. Why? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I was in med school when I left, I came to Ghana, I stopped, I went to midwifery school. So I didn't finish because I was supposed to continue in France because he wanted to leave. So I stopped. Everything was basa. People didn't understand why. They said, look at this idiot. He left med school for it. But you are not in my situation. Mm. You don't know the type of agreement I had with him. But you sit back home and you insult me. You're forgetting I'm a human being just like you. But trust me, I cursed all those people. Like, no jokes. Mm. Yeah, if you know you insulted me some time ago and your life is really not going well, trust me, it's from that time because I actually cursed you. So... I didn't understand. I felt I was scared, so I had to put myself together. I went back to school that same year. It took me off, you know, it took me off certain things. I kept myself busy. I had time for myself. I started going on vacations. I started feeling like, okay, I'm the only one in the world. Let me have fun and just my son. Mm -hmm. And that was a bonding moment. And then that was when I knew that it's actually not easy to be a single mom because if you even, if you even blow air, Oh, my son, I can slap him. Mm. Yeah, like, I was so protective. He was so attached. Especially when he started saying dada first. I said, hey, <laughs> like, how dare you? <laughs> I put the mama in his mouth by force. <laughs> and then, you know, he started saying mama. And he didn't even know his dad. Mm. Even so now, he calls his dad uncle. Oh. Mm, it's not my fault. Me, I don't care. It's not my fault. Because he's still young. He'll grow up. You know that's the father. So sometime he went to school. That was last year. And they were talking about that design. He told, he said, he said to his cousin, um, they used to attend the same school. Oh, me, I don't have a father. Oh, oh no. I said, you're not a bastard. No? Oh, no. <laughs> I had you correctly. You're not a bastard. Don't say that. Don't say you don't have a father. You have a father. He's there. So I called the father. And I was like, oh, this is what your son said. Talk to him. He said, I'm your father. He said, no, you're my uncle. You're my uncle. I said, you see? He said, ah, I then I won't catch you and send me your neighbor. He said, me not make you no. Oh. Did I tell him I'm his mother? Mm. He knew I was his mother. Mm. And already, I went through a lot having him. In terms of me being alone in the States, so many things happening, me in the delivery room alone. All these things. Your husband had, had gone to play or? Obviously, I wanted to have him in the States. Mm -hmm. And um, he is, in fact, he can't leave his job. The, the job is demand. That's their first wife. Oh. Mm. You that you're married, you're the, in fact, you're the third wife. Hmm. Second cries, you are too good. Third wife. So it became very hard for me. I, I, I wanted to do what I wanted to do for my child. And so, fine, okay, you have to work. You have to come and see us. And he came, he left. And he, he coming back again, my son had already popped up because he was preterm. He came way before. I was really mm -hmm. sick. I'm not joking. My BP was rising. I was just like, BP, I a bassa. I didn't know what I was up to. My mom had to come and she had to renew her visa. The date they gave her was, oh, so I didn't have nobody. nobody so that's where my postpartum depression started. started. Before leaving mm -hmm. the hospital, the doctor told me, you're suffering from postpartum depression. So we started counseling, 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 counseling. I got to Portugal. He didn't want me to continue. Mm. He was thinking the doctors are just going to chop my money. Or oh, his money, well, it wasn't my money. <laughs> and I didn't have money. What am I going to see? I'm not working. Mm. What, what am I going to see? What am I going to do? I just had to be there. I got to a time I said I wanted to come back to Ghana. I, I can't live anywhere apart from Ghana, honestly. Maybe just for a short while. And I came. But and because of mommy and because of family. I was alone. I took care, of the, took care of the boy alone and all that. And my mom was complaining that I had lost too much weight. Hmm. She wasn't happy. You know, my mom thought I was sick and I wasn't telling her. And I was okay. I, had, I, I was underweight as a pregnant woman. And that wasn't good. You see, everything was just off. Even to the father, I'm sorry to say this, it's as long as far gone, but I'm sorry. Yeah, since father, sorry. But the father thought that wasn't his child. So that actually broke me up. The fact that my father, you know, I had a, my father in law was someone I was really close to. He really liked me so much. He used to call me princess and sweetheart and all that because his wife was Habiba. Mm. And he really liked me so much. Well, that's what I thought. I don't know. Mm. Um, I called him and I was so angry because he did something 
my husband did some my ex-husband did something i was telling him before i could i couldn't cry i couldn't cry and talk at the same time so before even i'll end the thing i say why you tell me the child is not for him eh? don't worry are you the one to cover up for me so that's when i was like what i said i'll call you back then i knew that the problem on my right hand is more than the problem on my left hand so i even forgot about him just said, he's not my issue right now your father is my issue i was like what why would you think so like how did he understand why i just got in the marriage and i, was, I just got oh. pregnant situations happen mm -hmm. even I'll, the first night school get you pregnant it doesn't you. have to be twenty thousand times thank you it takes just less than a minute uh -huh. to conceive uh -huh. and people don't even know even with twins people don't know this medically you can have i can have sex with one two and i can give if both eggs are relating and two sperms are around it can you can have twins who have different two fathers, fathers. Yes. yes so if if, if your education is important to me, gee if you are not going to give anything to your child trust me exposure education give it to your child that's only that's the best thing you can leave for your child so when he said that I had that thing throughout. So from, from when I was like six months, I was already depressed. Hmm. And not having time for my husband, I mean, from him, because he's not available. available. I barely see him. Even when I have to go to the hospital, he maybe it's just once, I think. Maybe someone from the club has to come and pick me up. Take me, I, I, there was no moment. Hmm. There was no bonding moment. He didn't really know me much, you know. As, as a lover, as a wife, just as a friend. It was hard. No mother, no father. I was literally like an orphan. Yeah, because I wasn't even telling my mom nothing. My mom wasn't around. And I felt everyone has neglected me. That was the beginning of my depression. So when the baby came out, when he came out, I was looking at him. He said, mm, this one looks like me. Mm. I was scared. Not because I've done anything, but I was scared that they're going to say, hey, look. Three days, pe, pe, pe. oh, the God I serve, it now look like the grandfather. Mm. Even me, when I saw him, I said, hey, I know I wanted you to look, but not too much. <laughs> he looked like his people so much. Even till now, the way he behaves, everything like his people. And the, fa the father was even surprised his own father said that. But yes, that is what marriage is about. Especially when you're an African man and you allow your parents to to, to interfere with your marriage, knowing very well that our parents see things differently. They can't do things the way they used to do then, now. We are two generations, different generations. The way I was brought up, I can't do that to my son. Hmm. I can't bring him up the same way. Our northern people are very hard to deal with. Every northerner knows that. I'm not ashamed to say that. I am a northerner. And I'm not ashamed to say this. I cannot marry a northerner again. I'm not even joking. I can't. Dating, dating them is something else. Marrying them is horribly something else. And then I know if they see this, they're going to insult me. You can insult me. That's okay. We are two different people. So marry the people that understand you. Because they are very difficult people. They don't understand why you should work. They don't understand why you should be the woman you want to be. They don't understand when you even have money more than your husband. Why? I must say you were very, very... The last time I said to somebody that they were strong, people say it was not the right word to use, but you are courageous. It takes a lot of courage. And I was young, so you can imagine. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. Enjoy your life before you get married. No lie. You have to make sure you enjoy your life. You're satisfied with it. I mean, not too much, not silly things, but just make sure you understand yourself. I think at some point, I didn't even know who I was anymore. Mm. I didn't understand who I was anymore. I, didn't, I used to be that bubbly young girl who used to laugh a lot. I could laugh. You can't even slap me, I'll laugh. When you say sit down, I'll sit down. I was very naive. I was very young, naive, innocent. And then I have someone, you know, taking advantage of me. He wasn't a bad person, but he made me think he was after the divorce because you want me to force you to even give us shelter. I won't let my family But do we that. thought that you had gone away with a lot. Exactly. People oh, thought sincerely, I, had taken him I to thought court. you had gotten all the money, all the houses, That's what, all the... But I could have taken him to court because I had upper hand over everything. Mm -hmm. Right now, the family lawyer was pushing me. I had to take him to court. This, this. I said, no, let him be. He will come back. And yes, he did come back because things weren't going on well. And I said, you know why? Because any man that neglects the child suffers. And you will suffer if you don't do right. Any man 
that leaves a woman that has given birth. Like, blood is a covenant. It's a sacred thing. It's a serious thing. It's a spirit. Any woman that's had abortion for you, any woman that has gotten pregnant for you, any woman that you've literally slept with and you have the audacity and the guts and inhuman character to make her feel that she's not a human being, especially when she has had a miscarriage abortion and delivered for you, you treat her anyhow, it's a natural case. Even, even in 10 years, you pay for it. <sighs> and women, we don't know ourselves. We want to compare ourselves to men. I see people shouting feminist women. You want to compare yourself to a man? No. No. We are, it's a teamwork. We are two different breeds, literally. We are two different people. Why do you want to compare yourself? The neck and the head, doesn't, they don't compare themselves. But guess what? Without the neck, the head is useless. So that's, what, that's who we are. Why do you compare yourselves? And they didn't understand that. I, was, I, I wasn't ambitious, but I was someone who was very independent. I never asked him for nothing. He didn't understand. I think wow. got to a point, I felt he thought I had somebody. I don't know. You know, it's like, he didn't understand why. You, you not ask me for luxury. You have to ask me for attention. I cannot give it to you. Habiba, I am so glad that you've been able to open up to tell us what you've been through and the truth you've spoken. If you want to go there, forget your attention. Forget the romance that you want and all of that and go and uh, enjoy what mm, you want mm. to enjoy. And I am glad that you made a comment. You still want to get married. Of course. You know, it's not shattered your life no. totally. And of course, you have a beautiful son. Thank you. you know. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen him, but... Oh, he, he, now he's a big boy. He's a big, he's boy. big boy. He doesn't ask questions anymore. Oh, he does. Oh. He talks too much. Oh, my God. But I don't shut him up because that's who he is. Yeah. So he doesn't say, why, you know, we, daddy, why is this... No, daddy? no, he'll just tell me. Well, I, mean, I saw my friend, uh, his best friend is called Johan or something. He was like, Johan's daddy came and oh. picked me. Johan's daddy gave me... Mommy, where is daddy? Mm. And I'm like, oh, he's there. He asks me a lot. So that's why my mom always says, Habiba, please try and get married. So that they just feel so. that. And I'm like, my son is not complaining. He'll be okay. Aren't you also afraid that one day you wake up and your husband says, I'm coming for my son. And he takes him away from me. Oh, from he me. does not. One, you know, but who can take care of him? He, he said it himself. No one can take care of him like I can. And it's true. Where are you taking him to? Oh, I will fight till my last breath. Like, you cannot take him. Like, where are you taking him to? He wouldn't even try that. No, you cannot try that. Where were you? For two years, I did everything myself. I was paying his school fees and all that. So for two years, it was totally silent on it you was, guys. Yes. I think he felt he was punishing me. Or he felt I wanted to use the boy to punish him. I don't know. Total silence. Yeah. It was, because I, I'm, I won't talk to you. You too, you won't talk to me. But I got to a point, I wanted to put everything aside. I'm like, are you not going to ask of him? Hmm. Are you not going to do this? Are you not going to do that? And then he started bringing himself one by one, one by one. When things weren't going on well, he now came. I said, you know why? Because you're not taking care of your child. And it's a kiss. And guess what? He started taking care of him. And so things have become up. better. We thank God for your life. And I love the fact that you're you can share your story to, you know, to encourage someone and also put a smile on your face yeah. because sometimes you never even know what people are going through. Exactly. You know, so I'm glad that you spent some time with us and telling us about your career and how far you've come. And it's not the, I have, I've read stories, so I'm hearing a different narration now. Yeah. It's always like that. You know, and if, if I, I get some understanding as to how certain things were said and why they were said and all of that. So I'm grateful to you for making some time uh, to share yourself and just be yourself uh, with us here on the show. It brings us to the end of the segment. Uh, hopefully we're going on the flip side uh, for some more conversation. But Abiba and of course Elia, uh, John have been my guest and I hope that you enjoyed this edition as well. <laughs>